Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Hope City 7 at 7. want to welcome everybody for joining. want to thank you for joining. want to welcome you. Uh, we believe this will be uh, seven minutes of encouragement and seven minutes of hope for you. Uh, and just be a blessing to you. So we started our new sermon series. Well, we started it again, I should say. Uh, we started our new sermon series called Give It a Rest. And Pastor John preached this last Sunday, and the messages are available online in our app, on Facebook, on YouTube. So we make this free of charge. We want this to be a blessing to you. And I'm telling you, you need to go back. If you've heard it once, you didn't get it all. You've got to go back and listen to it a couple of times. You can download it. You can save it to your phone. You can listen to it from your phone. I mean, it is absolutely available. And I'll tell you, it'll be a blessing to you because you'll get more out of it the second, third, fourth, fifth time. So we, as we start the sermon series, we are reading out of Hebrews chapter 4. And our text is verses 9 and 10. Uh, now, I'm not going to read the text, but that's just for your reference. But what I do want to read is one of the scriptures that Pastor John read out of the Mirror Translation. Or actually, he read this out of the New International Version. And it was Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. And I'm just going to read the first part of this. So it says here, it says, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to, having, to have fallen short of it. Well, how do you fall short of the promise? You fall short by not believing it. And you can tell whether or not you believe something because if you've got to add to it, then you don't believe it is enough. The Israelites fell short in the wilderness because they didn't believe God. They didn't believe that they could possess the land. They didn't believe that they had the ability to possess the land. When they went to go spy out the land, they didn't go look look to see what they were getting. They looked to see if they could actually do it. And in doing so, they denied the promise of God for their life to have possession of the land flowing with milk and honey. And their unbelief caused them to wander in the wilderness and perish in the wilderness over a period of 40 years. Not That doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. I don't want to walk around the same problem for 40 years because I'm living in unbelief. I want to enter the rest of God by faith in what Jesus has already done for me. The cross was enough. And you have to get that down in you, that that everything that Jesus paid for at Calvary is enough. I don't have to add to the finished work of Christ. But many people try to, and they find themselves living a life of hardships and annoyances and intense labor. And they'll never know when they succeeded because when do you know when you've done enough work? But when we enter into his rest, we rest in the finished work of Christ. We rest in what's already been done for us. Now, Paul wrote to the church churches of Galatia And he talked to them about these very things. And in Galatians chapter 1, verses, uh, let me get back to that real quick. I was reading some other things. In verse uh, 6, Paul says this, and I'm going to read this out of the mirror translation. He says, I'm amazed that that you can so easily be fooled into swapping the gospel for a gimmick. Why is he saying that? Because some Jewish rulers and Jewish uh, elders and rulers came in and they tried to tell other people that they had to be circumcised to be saved. And Jesus did not tell anybody that. The law demands circumcision to enter the covenant, but Jesus gave us a new covenant in his blood. And when we receive Christ, then we are circumc- our circumcision is a circumcision of the heart and not just something in the flesh. That doesn't mean that we don't live the way we're supposed to live. This does not give anybody the excuse to live any way they want to. And the, the fact is that when you know Jesus, you don't live any way you want to. You want to live the way he wants you to. And not only that, but he empowers you to do it. 
which that's good news because we couldn't do it in ourselves, and you can't do it trying to obey a set of rules and regulations because your fre- your, the flesh will dominate you. When you try to interject law into your life, your flesh, the sin nature, will take advantage of it, and it'll produce death in your life. Listen to what he says here. The gospel reveals the integrity of your original identity rescued in Christ. The gimmick is a conglomeration of grace and legalism. The mixture boils down to a do-it-yourself plan of salvation. And I love what Pastor John said, that when, when Jesus said it was finished, he didn't say, now you take over and complete the rest of it. No, he said it is finished. In other words, what needed to be paid was paid. And, and the reason that he went to hell, well, he had to go pick up the keys. The keys of hell, death, and the grave. He snatched them from the devil, and his resurrection is the receipt of our redemption. Ha, ah, man, I tell you that, I get excited about that every time I say that because it's true, and it's in me. His resurrection is a demonstration that he defeated death, that he provides salvation for everyone who believes, not everyone who works. Now, I work because I believe. There is definitely a labor that comes out of my life because of what I believe, but it's not to obtain salvation. It's because I already have salvation, and that's the big difference. The law says you got to do this to get this. Jesus said, I've already done it, and now you can walk in it. Man, that's good news, good news, good news. And I'm, I'm running out of time, and I'm not even getting to where I want to get to. In verse 9, it says, let me be blatant and clear about this. Any gospel that does not em- emphasize the success of the cross is counterfeit and produces nothing but the curse. Any gospel that doesn't doesn't emphasize the finished work of the cross is a counterfeit and it produces a curse in your life. The cross, what Jesus did at Calvary was more than enough. And when we believe in the finished work of Christ, we enter into the rest that God has already prepared that still remains for anybody who wants to enter it. Well, thank you. God bless you. Have a great evening.